Hey everybody, it's Ed Dale here and welcome to our year start retrospective. Sounds like a confusing, uh, sounds like a contradiction, right? What we're trying to do here is look back at our previous year, in this case, 2019, and use the lessons of 2019 to make adjustments for 2020. The science tells us this is a far better way of doing things than, say, a traditional goal setting or um, some sort of you know, New Year's resolution sort of things. And I'll have some comments as we go through this. Now, this presentation uh, is designed specially for my academy members and it's designed to be done in real time. So it's designed for you to work through. So right now, if you have the time to do this presentation, grab a pen and paper, okay? So you'll be doing work throughout this presentation. That's all you need, pen, pad of paper, but you will need that. So go grab that now or pause this presentation and make sure you get that. Now, at various points in time, for no more than two minutes at a time, I'll be getting you to do various exercises. For you to get the most out of this presentation, you really need to do those exercises, okay? So that's the, so that's, this is a uh, live presentation and I want you to do it in real time. Um, wherever you happen to be at whatever time zone you happen to be in. All right, so let's get cracking and let's not waste your time any further. So the first thing that we're going to do in our yearly retrospective is really understand you know, why the retrospective? Why shouldn't, shouldn't we be goal setting? Shouldn't we do all these things? Well, how's your goal setting going? <laughs> The science tells us that the vast, 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 vast majority of goals that are ever set are never reached. So that's not a good way of going about things. Whereas we know from uh, technology such as agile software development and scrum approaches and basically the things that have driven the most fast and speedy advancements in terms of software technology, in terms of business technology, in the past couple of decades, in fact, since 2000, 20 years ago now, would you believe, gee whiz, uh, that the process of a retrospective in analysing what you are doing in your past year, what you can learn from that and what you can go from that. And that's what we're going to do today. Now, the other thing I will say right here up front is we're going to do this in two parts. The first part, I want to focus on the business you are trying to build. So for academy members, the business that they're trying to build is a business, some, some form of online business, could be an offline business, but we want to get to that magic $10,000 a month mark. And once your business is making that $10,000 a month, that well and truly covers most people's average income and they can work and develop their time, you know, their business full time. That's what we're all about. That's where we want to get to. So in doing that, it's worth having a look at, well, what happened last year, but we'll break it up because often people confuse business and personal issues. Now, here's something that's very important for you, right? The fact that you did or did not do something or did or did not complete something is rarely in fact, almost universally, not your fault. And you may say, Ed, that's ridiculous. It was my choice as to whether I ate that Mars bar or not if you were trying to lose weight, or it was my choice not to work on my business. And I will argue with you and say, au contraire, it's not that. There are three factors. Uh, BJ Fogg, uh, the Stanford professor uh, in in who does behavioural design, which we will talk about uh, at the end of this session, talks about three factors. There are prompts, there are abilities, and there are motivation in terms of whether you do or do not do something. And so these factors, including and particularly for entrepreneurs, energy, time, and environment 
are major, major issues. And we might touch on uh, a couple of those findings a little bit further on in this presentation. But let's keep going and let's actually get into work. And a reminder, you will need to do pen, uh, you will need pen and paper, and we are doing this in real time, okay? So please do these exercises with us to get the most out of this. I venture to, to bet this will be the most valuable exercise you do at the start of this year or indeed any year. So here's our first exercise. And again, I want you to focus on business wins, big or small. So these are not personal wins. This is not that you're able to, you know, do better time management or get better sleep or any of those sorts of things. This is about very specifically things about your business, the thing that you are building, okay? So these are business wins, right? I managed to generate 500 leads a month or I managed to hit $10,000 a month or I was able to bump up conversion in my sales letter. Those are the types of things that we are looking for in this two-minute exercise. And it doesn't matter how big or how small, they are, can be little tiny things or big things, but any sort of business win, right? That's what I want to focus on in those two minutes. And for those of you in the academy, you recognize this next, <laughs> you recognize this next, uh, this next screen, the famous timer. So I've got a timer set for two minutes. I'm going to get that going. And I just want you to jot down as many things as you can in the two minutes. So let's get going. Let's hit play. We are on our way. What are the business wins that you made in 2019? Or if you're watching this in any year, last year, what were some of the business wins? Could have been you discovered a new market or decided the market that you're going to build your business in. Or maybe you had some conversations with customers. Maybe you went to a trade show um, and learnt more about your market. Maybe you conducted some problem interviews. Maybe you did some Facebook lead generation or tests. These are the types of things that we are looking for. All right, so we've got a minute 18. I'll have a sponsored Pepsi Max while you uh, while you uh, continue. We're at one oh five. And for those of you on live, I see you. Hello, welcome, Adam T. Green screen, green screen, Adam. Check it out. Okay, we've got 40 seconds. What are your business wins? See if you can think of a couple more. Oh. Isn't that a pleasant? Stop. <laughs> Isn't that a pleasant? <laughs> Very pleasant, that is. <laughs> but there you go. We've got some business wins. How did you feel about that? You know, too often as entrepreneurs, and it's because we're just wired this way, it's not your fault. We tend to dwell on the things that didn't work. And, you know, those things are, um, you know, uh, you know, we tend to notice things that we attach emotions to. And unfortunately, as you become an entrepreneur and as you're building your business, the things that you create the most emotional attachment to are typically things that didn't work and things that were failures. And so let's have a look at that. What's a good way to um, look at that? And the best way to look at that is the concept of business 
lessons, okay? So we're going to do another two-minute exercise here. And I want you to think about the lessons that you learned. So rather than thinking about things and think about the, the psychology of this is really, really important. Rather than say the things that failed, like my launch failed, all right? So that, that could be one. I hope it's not for you, but it could be. Legitimately, it could be a thing or an email campaign didn't work. What were the lessons you learned from that? So I learned that I should have got joint venture partners and should have worked on getting joint venture partners many, many months before I started. What were the lessons that you learned from that? And again, these are not, to be very clear, and don't worry, we're coming to them. These are not personal uh, issues. So it's not about I failed to manage my energy or I didn't manage my time properly or any of those sorts of things. We're getting to that, but not right now. Right now, what I want you to focus on is what were the lessons you learned from things that happened in your business last year? All right, so I'm going to give you the classic two minutes. So let's get that underway. Pardon me. Hope that didn't come through. <laughs> what were the business lessons? Yeah, you might have learned things, for example, about like you that you didn't like doing. You know, what else? That's a great uh, thing, Adam. You know, what are the, what are the, you might have discovered that you didn't enjoy doing certain types of work. Maybe you didn't like doing, um, I don't know, copywriting or you didn't enjoy doing videos or you thought you'd start a podcast and you didn't enjoy doing that. You know, what are the things, that's a great way of looking at it. What are the things that you learned that you didn't enjoy doing? Because they're things that we, can work on in 2020 as well. So we've just uh, going a minute, you've got a minute, try to get as many as possible as you go down. Sadly, people tend to find this uh, a heck of a lot easier. <laughs> okay, we're down to uh, 43 seconds. You might break some of them down. Some of them may be quite broad. So what didn't you like specifically? Uh, you know, what aspects of the work that you were doing? Um, what things did you do that were doing that? And remember, right now we're focusing on business issues. We're going to get to personal issues very shortly. Don't you worry. There's that highly, <laughs> stop, <laughs> our highly annoying buzzer, <laughs> as I love. All right, fantastic. So we've gone through and we've looked at our wins from a business perspective and lessons that we learnt in the past year. So now what I want to want you to do, and this is, even though we're doing it, it's a two-minute exercise, it's a very different two-minute exercise. This is all about quantity. I want you to come up with as many possible ideas as you possibly can, as fast as you can. Use bullet points. Just go, we're at the winner is the person who comes up with the most ideas in two minutes and specifically what we are doing here is what could you improve for 2020 with your business so martin for example on the live thing and g'day martin uh said i started making progress when i began outsourcing bingo maybe you could explore outsourcing that is something that is a classic thing that you could do what parts of outsourcing could you include you could break it down even into to littler parts think about the types of things you could do to improve the chances of your business working now again to emphasize this is business stuff that you could do like do different types of what 
paid advertising experiments could you run? What type of funnel experiments could you run? What type of conversion tests could you do? What type of interviews could you conduct to better understand your market? These are the types of things I'm talking about. The personal stuff, don't worry, we're coming to. All right, but for now, I want you to really focus on things that you could improve from the business perspective. And I want you to go for quantity. Don't think about it. They can be outrageous. They can be crazy. It can be anything. Hiring George Clooney is your spokesmodel. I don't know. Whatever it is, that the important point here is quantity is everything, right? I just want you to throw out as many possible ideas and bullet points as you possibly can. All right, let's get ready to rumble. Okay, here we are with our countdown. So two minutes, as many ideas as you possibly go. Go, go for it. What activities, what things, what experiments could you do to that from a business perspective could you do in 2020? And again, if you go broad, maybe break it down a little bit and go a little bit, anything to get quantity. I'd love you to get 20 different ideas. It would be awesome. Excuse me for drinking during the uh, podcast, but it's darn hot here. <laughs> okay, we've got just over a minute. I reckon you could come up with at least 10 potential new ideas for improving your business. And think how you could break some of those down. You, know, you could break those points. So if you're hiring people, maybe there are ways you can learn to hire better people as well. So look at what are the best blueprints, or as we say around here in the academy, recipes for you hiring. Okay, we've got 20 seconds left. I reckon another five ideas at least. Go. Bullet points. You don't have to spell it all out. You can fill it in later, as long as you understand what you were saying. 10 seconds. Come on, a couple more. At least a couple more. Two, one, pens down. Okay, hopefully you came up with a whole bunch of things. Now, what I want you to do, what I want you to do with that is now what I want you to do is take some time to have a look at that list and look at the thing. What's the thing that would make the most impact? Okay, what is the thing in your list that you just wrote that would make the most impact? What do you think would have the most significant impact? Now, impact can mean a few things. In business, I often like to think of it as what would increase your certainty? You know, if there are things that you're really uncertain about in your business, any experiment that you could conduct to increase your certainty is powerful. So what's the thing that would move the needle? Or as Tim Ferriss would say, what's the one domino you could push that would make a whole bunch of other dominoes fall? Because doesn't it make sense in 2020, if we're looking at what specifically to focus on in our business, that will be key to us moving forward and continuing to do that. And very much so in the, what we're going to be doing in the academy uh, is that we're going to be exploring those themes. What are those things that we can do? And designing experiments around those. And you notice I use the word experiment a lot and I do that very deliberately because we don't know what will work or not work. It's, it's not a certainty, it's an experiment. But what we do know the great thing about any experiment, whether it inverted commas proves or disproves our hypothesis, as they say in the fancy pad science world, we've learnt something. And that is really more important.
okay that is a great deal more important so i want you to have a look at what would make the biggest impact and i want you to highlight that somewhere you know if you're using a kanban board uh like we teach you how to use um then that'd be something i would highlight on my kanban board or put it on a post-it note somewhere where you visually can see it so that will be something that you work on specifically in 2020 Okay, so that's the next part of it. All right. Now, the part that you've all been waiting for, let's look at you. Okay, so the interesting thing about where we are, you know, in this time and place, and as I'm talking, you know, as we're filming this, it's at the very, very start of 2020. So, so it's a good time of year. It's a time that we're very reflective and we look at, uh, look at uh, you know, people taking New Year's resolutions. And of course, we're using a much more scientific approach as a retrospective. And what I can tell you without a shadow of a doubt, right, unreservedly, that the success or failure of your business almost certainly will not be because you picked the wrong blueprint or recipe to build your business. There are so many fantastic recipes and blueprints for the price of a book that are out there that will help you biz build your business that are proven, tied, tested. Thousands and thousands and thousands of businesses have been created using these models, right? If you follow the model, they will work, okay? But let me tell you, I did an experiment in at the end of 2019 for the last six months of 2019 where 40 very, very brave entrepreneurs allowed me to observe them on a daily basis. We called it Operation Scrum Style. And the results of that experiment, which finished uh, at the end of 2019, were startling absolutely startling and incredibly revealing. And I've got so much to tell you about that over the coming months. But let me give you a couple of things. The people who weren't able to build their business uh, in that six-month period were definitely not, it wasn't because of a, um, a failure of blueprint. They picked the wrong blueprint. The one thing with regards to blueprints, which I saw many, many people making the mistake, and I'll give you this one for free as well, is they kept trying to pick and choose from various recipes. It was like trying to cook a roast dinner while choosing parts of a sponge recipe to follow. It was crazy. People were mixing the sponge recipe and the lobster bisque recipe and expecting to get a sponge cake. It makes no sense. Yet people were doing that all the time. In fact, that was the one of the huge discoveries from Operation Scrum Style is that rather than follow one recipe, one blueprint, one strategy, they would try to mix and match. And that was a disaster. It's not designed to work. How would a strategy like, uh, say, I don't know, pick one at random, Russell Brunson's perfect webinar, an extremely successful strategy, proven literally tens of thousands of times uh, around the world. And you try to execute that while adding in parts of, let's pick another, say Ryan Levesque's very good ask strategy, a survey-based business strategy, where you mix and match and you try to add those two recipes and expect to get a result that either one of the creators of the originals would expect. It's insane, right? It makes no sense. Yet I saw people do it all the time. However, that was not there. That's easily diagnosed and it's easily picked up on. Um, and fortunately for those people, it was just a, a smart little wrap over the wrist and they were able to course correct no problem at all and just focus using the one recipe. That was not the biggest issue. The biggest issue by so far that it was not funny and it is not a joke, is energy, specifically sleep. Sleep was the destroyer of businesses and, ironically, dreams, right? The results were incontrovertible. The results were 
absolutely black and white. Because I was monitoring what was happening, I noticed where on every day with every single one of these entrepreneurs, they'd have to report in every single day. And when they didn't report in or when they did report in, but they reported a lack of progress, the first question I asked was, how much sleep did you get? And the results were devastating. The average amount of sleep was six hours, six hours. And the science, in fact, I was just listening to one of the TED Talks, not a TEDx talk, a TED Talk, which was at this year's TED Talk from a sleep scientist. The devastation that six hours of sleep will bring on you medically, forget your business, is it's disastrous. Men who average six hours of sleep a night have smaller testicles than men who sleep eight hours. That, if, if nothing, I'll stop you. Come on, fellas. You want the bigger testicles? You need sleep. I digress. I'm sorry about that image, everybody. But it's, it's dramatic, right? It, but far more importantly, what people are doing is that by definition to build a business in 2020, you have to sacrifice, right? Because you're adding something extra into your life and your life is already busy. The people that I work with and the people I deal with and the people that, that, that I work with are not 20-somethings working at home who can hustle 18 hours a day because their biology is built that way. I deal with people who have obligations, who are looking after people, who are caring for other people. They're care caring for older relatives. They're working. They're doing all of those. You know, they have serious obligations to their children. They have mortgages. They have all of these things. So by definition, to build a business, you have to sacrifice. You know, it's, it's physics. You only have a block there. And that block, right, what these entrepreneurs, the entrepreneurs who failed, inverted commas, in Operation Scrum Style, although they provided an enormous benefit to all of you, is the thing that they were sacrificing was sleep. And it will not work, right? It just simply will not work. The science is incontrovertible, and I'm not going to bang you over the head with it now, except I can tell you without a shadow of doubt that if you are getting minimum eight hours sleep, some of you need more, right? Some of you, I did a huge discovery for me in 2019 was because I've always known this, right? And I've been religious about getting eight hours sleep. But when I actually went and did an actual sleep study, turns out I need nine hours and it's changed my world, rocked my world going from eight to nine hours. It does mean sacrifice because I get up early. It means going to bed almost unsociably early, but that, compared to being able to be more present, be more focused, have the energy to do the things that I need to do, it's not a sacrifice at all, right? So anyway, I right, so sermon over, right? This is what I discovered. So I want to have a look at you, and I bet you quite a few of you watching this right now, because I know, I know when I've asked at my live events, at the various recipe live events around the world that I did last year, the average hours of sleep, six to seven hours max, and it's not enough, right? It is not enough. You will not create a business based on that. It's just impossible for somebody of, like if you're 18 and living at home with your parents and you don't have to do your washing, you don't have to do all that sort of stuff, go for it. That's fantastic. That's not the real world for my clients, right? And that is what you need to do. So I want, I want you to think about that. But let's look at you in terms of this retrospective. And the first thing that I want to do is I want to look at what worked for you personally. Maybe you had a new routine. Maybe you started meditation for the first time in 2019. Or maybe you stuck to a meditation schedule or you picked up a new routine that was beneficial to you. I want you for the next two minutes, I want you to think about you doing that in 2019. What worked for you, big or small? I'm going to give you two minutes now to reflect and jot down as many things for you personally. What personally worked for you? What were the wins? What were the, the positives for you as a person? Like if you're looking over your shoulder as a project manager, what was, what was the thing that worked for you? All right, let's go. Two minutes.
Okay, we've got about a minute left. What things did you do? Did you have a new positive habit or perhaps you stopped a, a negative habit for the, for the first time last year? Maybe you're able to improve your environment in some way. Maybe you took up Kanban for the first time. Yes, any sort of mindfulness work. Very important in this day and age. Okay, a few more seconds. Oh, nice work, Sandy. Okay, pens down. Set this up for the next time. By the way, if you happen to be watching this presentation and you've enjoyed what you've seen so far here on YouTube, please like and subscribe. Hit that thumbs up. And if you aren't subscribed to the channel, please subscribe to the channel. Um, hopefully you'll find a whole bunch more stuff like this that is useful. So that would be awesome. Okay, let's look at okay what worked for you in... 2019. Now what we want to do, oops, there we are. What lessons did you learn in 2019? So think about this personally. You may have noticed. So again, I want you to, and again, think about the psychology of this. You may have found that there's, uh, you know, that you had a distinct lack of energy or you weren't able to follow through with uh, your scheduled times that you're working on your business. Okay, that's the, that's the problem, the lesson. What's the lesson there, though? I want, you to, I want you to reframe it from a problem to a lesson. So, for example, if you learned that you had an energy problem, and you may have heard just my little lecture on sleep just before. Maybe it was something that had to do with sleep, for example. And so maybe the lesson is that I need to get better sleep. Um, I need to start a mindfulness practice. You know, if you, there was a lot of negative self-talk, which is completely natural. Um, one of the classic things that we work with in the academy all the time and we figure all of those sorts of things right so so what lessons did you learn in the last year that would be fantastic so let's have a look at that i'll give you two minutes on the clock what lessons did you learn what things behaviors habits do you think um based on what happened last year that are lessons that you could learn. So for example, as Anne-Marie put here, which is a good one, need to prioritize my business. How were you not prioritizing your business and how could you learn lessons from that? So you could even break that down. How was that exhibiting it, itself? What was the interruptions? Right, try to think about it and break it down a little bit.
It's a nice reframe when we think, you know, problems and be down on ourselves. And as you'll hear very shortly, I'm about going to give you a book re recommendation here in a couple of minutes. Uh, literally just released on, funnily enough, December 31st, which is a fantastic book. Uh, will definitely be in my considerations for the book of the year uh, 2020, uh, which talks about the fact that, look, it's, it's not your fault, right? It, it is, uh, there's a, a series of triggering, uh, sorry, triggering triggers that cause this. So I've got 30 seconds. What else have you got there? What are the lessons? Jot them down on paper. Makes such a big difference when you get it out of your head and get it written on paper. Okay, we've got 10 seconds. There we go. Time is up. Fantastic. So we had an opportunity to look at our lessons and we've had an opportunity to look at our wins for the past year in this case, 2019. Although, honestly, you could do this any year and apply this and it will work the same way. Okay, just like we did with business, we're now going to look at what could you improve for this year coming up. Okay, so what could you improve? And remember, the object of this exercise, even though it's a two-minute exercise, it's different. Okay, I want you to go for quantity, as many ideas as you possibly can. So, for example, uh, Anne-Marie in the live chat here has said something like uh, valuing my needs more. Okay, what concrete things could we do to value your needs more? What could you do? So, for example, uh, I discovered very cool here in Mooney Ponds that the council actually runs a writer's room. How cool is this? I just walked past and discovered it. For free, they have set up a quiet space with desks, PowerPoints and stuff in the beautiful old uh, town hall um, where you can go and write. It's a beautiful air-conditioned space that the council has provided for free for you to go and write with power. It's so cool. I intend on taking my little electric scooter up there, toddling up there and doing writing. So that's an example. That's an example of one thing that you could do to improve. Very cool thing. Then there may be uh, places like that that you could potentially go to. That's just one example of how you could improve. But what I really want you to do is, as I say, bullet points. And even if, as long as you understand what you mean, Go on to the next one. I want quantity, quantity, quantity. That is the key to this exercise, okay? So let's, uh, there we are. Let's set this to two minutes. All right, two minutes, let's go. What could we do to improve this year? This coming year, what could you do to improve? What little things could you do? You might find inspiration from your learn list. Try to get as many down as possible. Quantity, quantity, quantity. Don't even be thinking. As many ideas as you possibly can come up with. Okay, we've got a minute. I reckon you can come up with at least 10 more ideas. Good work. More ideas. More, more, more. Okay, 30 seconds. I reckon you can do at least five more. Okay. 
Don't think about how valid they are. There's time for that later. Just jot down the ideas. No idea is stupid. Okay, about 10 seconds ish. Okay, time is up. All right, fantastic. Thank you very much for that and appreciate you in, uh, working along with me because, you know, it's one thing to watch videos and, you know, they can be interesting and they can be entertaining, but if you're actually putting pen to paper, then you're actually actively learning and it makes a world of difference. It makes a world of difference. Okay, again, I want you to have a look at that list and ask yourself, what would make the biggest impact? And I'm going to give you a hint on how to look at this uh, with this new book recommendation in just a moment. So make sure you hang around for that. Very, very useful indeed. Have a look at your list there and think about, again, what would, if I fix that thing, that would have a pretty big impact on everything. And particularly, you know, I'm biased here. <laughs> I want that thing to have an impact. So you've got more time for your business or you've got more energy for your business or you've got a better environment to build that $10,000 a month business. You know, that's my, that's my bias here. So I'd love to see you looking at things like that. That would be fantastic. Okay, so what would make the biggest impact? And I just want you to circle that or highlight it in some way. Because I want to give you a book recommendation. And you can sort of see it there, but unfortunately, it's, it did, the title doesn't uh, quite go in. The title is called, it is Tiny Habits, and it's by B.J. Falk. Okay, Tiny Habits by B.J. Falk. Literally just come out. Uh, literally a couple of days, I sped through it. I found it so useful. And what I love about it is not a book about well, it's not a book about habits per se. The book is about behavioural design because that is what B.J. Fogg teaches. He's a lecturer and he teaches behavioural design. And behavioural design comes down to three things. And we'll be, boy, you're going to get bored of this in the academy because I'll be drilling you on this all the time. There are three factors that will decide whether you take action on something or not take action on something. And there is only three. Okay, there are, the three things are motivation, ability, how hard or easy is it for you to do? And the third one, so we've got motivation, ability, and the prompt. The third one is the prompt. You won't do an action or you won't do an action or you will do an action based on whether you are prompt. Not This is not news to people in the academy. It might be uh, and news and potentially a bit insulting for you, but we're just basically big, dumb, organic computers, 97, 98% of the time. And what I mean by that is we operate based on prompts or triggers. We are triggered to do certain activities. So, you know, if, for example, let me give you one that I immediately stopped doing the moment I read this book, which is admittedly like three days. All right. So here's one, right? Using your phone as an alarm. What happens? So good. You've got an alarm. That's great. Right. But then the alarm goes off and it's your phone. So you pick up your phone and you turn the alarm off. What do you instantly do? you start scrolling, right? You start scrolling. Whereas I thought, what if I just use a traditional alarm clock because wasting 15 minutes in my bed just scrolling through Twitter is not a viable or good routine, all right? So that is the, the key thing. And again, I'll just mention the name of that book is Tiny Habits and the author is B.J. Fogg. 
Okay. So designing, and when we're looking at a behavior, and if you look at your list of the one thing that you want to improve, the easiest thing for us to improve or fix is the prompt. And what we'll be doing in the academy this year is we'll be working through that. So in our engage sessions, I'll be asking you, okay, well, what's the, what's the prompt that's triggering or not triggering this activity? What is that? They are the things that we need to, need to work on. And then if we figure out the prompt, then we have to look at the ability. How easy or hard is this activity? Because if the activity is really hard and your motivation is low because you've got no energy, for example, you're not going to do the ex you're just not going to do the activity. And unfortunately, that's the death of entrepreneurs, right? Because if you do not have, because often you are taking on challenging new tasks. And if you don't have the energy, which is one of the factors of motivation, there, you are simply not going to do that activity. It is impossible. It is impossible to do. Okay. So guess what? If we understand that, then what can we do to make this activity easier? How can we make, is there anything can we do? Can we do, is there a drill or a practice thing that we can do to make this activity easy? So I understand it. See, because here's the thing, if it's super easy and you've got low motivation, guess what? You can still do it. If you've got super low motivation, can you sit down and watch Rick and Morty or your favorite Japanese anime? Or is that just me? right? That doesn't take any stress at all, right? Sitting in front of the TV and vegging out doesn't take... And by the way, I love sitting in front of the TV and vegging out. I love it. I'm not going to get dirty on anybody for doing that, but I don't do it. You know, I don't do that and then not get enough sleep, right? So sleep first priority, right? Work and then as rewards, do that sort of stuff. Right, because there is sacrifice. You know, I'm sorry. Spoiler alert: 2020. Right, there is sacrifice required. If you want to build a ten thousand dollar a month business, there is sacrifice required. And unfortunately, what most of you are doing is you're sacrificing your sleep, specifically, um, and that is killing you. Right, My, <laughs> metaphorically, from a business perspective, and literally, the science is incontrovertible. Like it's stunning. Um, and uh, do yourself a favor and look up the uh, recent TED talk on sleep. Um, just just uh, devastating. The science is incontrovertible. So there we have it. There is our 2020 uh, retrospective. There is a great book recommendation for you. You will not be wasting your time by getting Tiny Habits by BJ Fogg, right? That is a fantastic thing for you to, to do and i can't wait to work with those of you in the academy throughout 2020 and for those of you on the youtube channel i look forward to dropping little gems like this every now and then and i would appreciate if you like subscribe and if there's somebody you think might benefit from a particular lesson or particular workshop please let them know that would be awesome and uh, i will see you around so thanks everybody and for those of you alive awesome and we'll speak soon all right thanks for coming now i've got to turn all this stuff off <laughs>